To start off, we need to go back to last year when I put out a few videos showing the listening room that I was putting together in my basement. And when I put out one of those videos, I got an email from a viewer with a link to an interesting method of acoustic treatment. That was around seven months ago, and I'm finally getting around to trying it out. And that's what I'll be showing in this video. The idea is to create what's known as metamaterial. And basically what it is, is a long rectangular box with a lid with the labyrinth inside. I use a full sheet of half inch plywood plus scraps to make all the parts. And then I started putting it together. Right now, this is open on one side, but that'll be closed with the panels on the door that I walked in through in that opening clip. With it fully assembled, I brought it down to my listening room and started taking apart the existing door so that I can add this in. And here you can see the door is open and the top panel is removed. And what those panels are attached to is just a simple wooden frame with fiberglass on the inside and that's closed with cloth on the back. And when I finished taking that out, I could get the meta material panel put in. Starting from the bottom, I sized it so that it would screw directly onto those panels using the same screw holes. And here it is finished, looking exactly the same as when I started. Now I should say that before I started any of this, I did a couple of measurements and you can see some of that on the TV screen. The first measurement I did was inside the room. And mainly what I'm looking at here is the decay time for the lower frequencies to see if this panel has any effect on those. That's one of the claims that it makes is that it will treat frequencies down as low as 44 Hertz. I also ran four sweeps in the room that this door leads to to see if this panel has any effect on that, either on reverb time or on sound transmission through the door itself. Then after the panel was put in place, I ran the measurements again, once again in the room four sweeps and also in the back room four sweeps so that I'll be able to compare the two. This plot that you're looking at here is the four sweeps that I ran in the listening room before I made the change. And this one is the measurement from after I changed the door. And here they are one on top of the other for direct comparison. And while these do look slightly different, that might be the result of putting the microphone in a slightly different location when I took the second measurement. Much more important is the waterfall plot that shows how long the sound stays around, especially in low frequencies. And when I compare the two, I don't see a significant difference here either. Now we'll move on to the measurements from the back room. Here's what it looked like with the original door. And here's what it looks like with the new metamaterial door. And once again, the differences here aren't significant enough to say that this did anything at all. Well, that was quick and kind of disappointing, and I don't want to leave off here. So what I'll do is I'll give you an update on my system that I have set up. If you've been watching the videos that I've been making on this channel, you'll know that I settled on Open Baffle, a four-way with a 15-inch woofer. And that's the one you see on the left, a very rough prototype. And then I came up with a design for those that I like and I made a mock-up and that's the one that's on the left. I keep all the music on the computer and listen to it directly from that. I'm using digital out and that goes to my mini DSP and that feeds my three amplifiers. The one that I built for the subwoofers is sitting on top of the stand. It's still not finished, but it's working perfectly. And the two receivers on the bottom of the rack are for the open baffle speakers. The Yamaha on the right is set to multi-channel input and drives the midwoofer, the mid-range, and the tweeter on both speakers. And the Onkyo on the left, which is only two channels, drives the 15-inch woofer in each of the open baffle speakers. Back when I was setting up the room and mostly finished with it, I was using a pair of bookshelf speakers. And at the time I did a recording in the room from the listening position and compared that to the original music files that I used. And the idea there was not to show how good the speaker sounded, but to show instead how good a treated room can sound. So now that I have two open baffle speakers that are roughly close to what they're gonna be in the end, I thought I would record another sound sample. And if you know anything about doing this, about microphones and rooms and speakers, you'll know that it's very difficult to get an accurate representation of what the music sounds like in the room. In the sample that I did before, I used my measurement microphone, but I did it mono because that microphone is mono. 
but this time I thought I would try something different to make a stereo recording. So the first thing I did was I adjusted my EQ settings on the mini DSP so that the speaker response is as flat as possible. And nothing is perfect here. You saw the speakers, they're just prototypes and also microphones being what they are, the further they are away from the source, the worse it's gonna sound. So you're never gonna get a perfect match here. So to get stereo, what I did was I played the song through one speaker at a time, and I recorded that as a separate track with the microphone pointed at that speaker. I did the left side first, and then I did the right side. And then I put the two tracks together. Other than matching the same volume as the original file, I did no processing on this. Mm -hmm. 